Welcome to Africa at the United Nations. We are gathered here because our forefathers, learning from the tragic episodes of human history, decided to establish the United Nations as the guardian of peace. However, we are yet to achieve true universality in the main organs of the United Nations. Africa has no permanent seats at the UN Security Council. Our quest for African solutions to African problems is yet to be given the respect and support it deserves. We believe these considerations underpin the credibility of the Council in the continent. African problems are sustainably addressed when approach in the true context of the region and take full account of the strategic interests and aspirations of, aspirations of the countries concerned. It is only when we do this and uphold regional solutions we could start reducing the proliferation and overextended study of African issues in the UN Security Council. Mr. President, for the past four years, Ethiopia has made significant progress in its socio-economic development and democratization. These years have also been com compounded by challenges that tested our survival as a nation. In November 2020, the most heinous and treasonous attack was waged against the Ethiopian National Defense Force that protected not only the peace and stability of Ethiopia, but also helped keep peace in other countries on behalf of, on behalf of the United Nations and the African Union. The criminal group that remains hell-bent in destroying societal foundation of our country colluded with external actors opposed to our development aspirations. The insecurities, the insecurity this group created has been very tragic and costly. Yet, the government of Ethiopia has earnestly tried to avoid this conflict. Regrettably, our efforts to prevent the conflict from igniting were not successful. Thanks to the resolve and determination of Ethiopians, the designs of our adversaries against Ethiopia's progress have been frustrated. We have also paved a path for peace and recovery, relying on the ability of the peace-loving people of Ethiopia to reconcile, make peace among ourselves, and start the process of healing. We thus call for support to our agenda for peace, reconciliation, and reconstruction. We also urge respect for and support to the AULED peace process. Any other approach, including the politicization of human rights and unilateral coercive measures, will not yield any positive outcome. Mr. President, the past year has also been a milestone for my country and we believe to the entire Nile, Basin, Nile River Basin. Our project, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, commenced lighting our homes and fulfilling our intergenerational aspiration. All the glory and gratitude go to the people of Ethiopia who financed this project. The dividend goes far and wide to the entire region. Taking this opportunity, I reiterate Ethiopia's commitment to equity and cooperation in the use of transboundary rivers and shared prosperity with all riparian countries. We will continue in good faith the trilateral negotiation under the auspice of the African Union to reach a mutually acceptable outcome. More importantly, we must actively support governments that work to create a conducive environment for the prosperity of their countries. In addition, Africa's effort to chart its destiny must not be complicated by big power competition. 
Mr. President, allow me to conclude by reemphasizing the need to scale up international cooperation. The gravity of the challenge we face today demands us to come together in search of collective solution. We need more, not less, multilateralism. We shall continue to uphold our cardinal principles of independence, impartiality, integrity, non-interference, sovereign equality, and non-selective to maintain a working multilateral system rooted in the Charter of the United Nations. We need to reform our global institutions to reflect current realities. We need to make them more representative and responsive to the demands of the time. Only through genuine solidarity and concerted action could we ensure collective security and prosperity. I thank you all for your attention and wish you, Mr. President, a successful term of office. I thank you. Amasagnalo. Did you like or hate what you heard? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more candid speeches like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips, or topics about Africa you'd like us to cover 